You're a member of a secret cabal trying to gain influence over the Senate in Trajan's Roman Empire. You're trying to sway the bills that come through and also gain power over the factions while trying to gain Trajan's favor in Senatus. Hey guys, and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Will Meadows. And I'm Sarah Meadows, and today we're looking at Senatus. This is from designer Jim Pinto, and it's coming to Kickstarter from Grey Mask Games. It's a game for three to six players. It takes for about an hour to three hours, depending on your player count. It's a negotiation, area, influence, worker placement type of game. We've got a prototype copy of it. Let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. To set up the game, lay out the main board, or as in our case, the giant gorgeous playmat. Place each deck of cards in its corresponding place as signified by the icons on the board. Flip over the first bill, rider, and three senators, and then place a support token on each. Put out all of the faction decks and the track markers. Then give each player their influence cubes, a player aid, and three hidden agenda cards, and let them choose one. Select a start player, and each person places one cube at a time on an empty senate seat, a faction, or the Emperor's Favor box, then you're ready to begin. On their turn, players can either influence a faction by playing one or two influence cubes to the table and drawing the matching cards. They can remove their own influence from the board. They can play a card from their hand and take all of its associated actions. They can discard cards from their hand in order to control a senator and his seat. Or they can subterfuge by discarding matching faction cards to take an action. During the game, there are three recess rounds players will score points. Before each recess, players have the option to take an additional action at a cost of three corruption. Then, every player removes one influence from a faction. Then, the orator counts the votes and resolves the current bill and rider. A new orator is then chosen based on the influence on the emperor, and points are awarded for the most and points lost for the least. Points are also subtracted for lost influence cubes and having too much corruption. The player with the most Senate seats gains 15 points, and all other players with seats gain 6, and an additional point is awarded for each seat. Points are also awarded for having the most influence on each faction, and bonus points for unused support tokens. An additional hidden agenda card can be drawn for a penalty, and each player draws one faction card and the rounds resume. After 15 rounds, players total up their scores during the final recess, and the player to have earned the most points wins. Senatus is a great little, medium, not little, <laughs> huge, medium weight Euro style game that has you gathering points from all kinds of different places on the board. There's a lot of different choices to choose from on your turn and figuring out how to get that right balance between not having too much uh, influence in the districts but still maintaining control and still getting stuff up into the Senate and having control there. Uh, finding that balance and, and just tweaking it so you have just the right amount of cubes is really the fun of this game. This game uh, has several different paths to victory as far as gaining points. Um, it also kind of gives you a little help with some of those hidden agenda cards um, that kind of gives you a starting point on what you might want to focus on. Some of them um, purely focus on the factions. Some of them um, maybe let you lose some corruption at the end of the game, to, so you can kind of keep that in mind. Um, so those cards are, are helpful at the beginning. And then um, just using the cards wisely on your turns, um, you can spend them in the Senate to gain those Senate seats and influence senators, which have, uh, some of them have very powerful actions on them. And, or you can use the actions on the cards. Um, sometimes those actions may help you mitigate um, taking over some of those Senate seats that are already filled up and you don't have a way to gain more or even um, rearranging some of the cubes in the factions. One of the more interesting parts of the game is uh, being able to be the orator and make the decisions on those bills. I think that's what gives it such a wide range of time frame because the game can be played pretty quick. We've played it pretty speedily, less than an hour, I would say, in a two-player game. Uh, they say that it can range up to three hours, and I could definitely see how if you were in like to the negotiating of, uh, you know, if. 
in, in, in the case of all those bills, you're going to have to have somebody help you basically make the bills pass or fail. So there's a lot of like, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine that goes on in the game because most of those bills have the option where the orator gets to pick, you know, add three influence to something and then pick one other player to do the same thing. And so you can kind of get people on your team to help you vote and pass those bills when you're the orator and then give them those powers. And that could get really interesting, especially if you got into some backstabbing things, you know, or if the power switches in who's got the most influence over Caesar. Um, I think that this game has, depending on your game group, um, that negotiation is something that could be played up quite a bit in your group or not so much if you want to keep it more of a pure Euro with the worker placement and influence cubes. Um, uh, something else to keep track of is your corruption in the game. Um, if you get too far on that track, you will start to lose your influence cubes. Um, if you're able to um, be a less uh, shady in your dealings, you can move your corruption back down, and so you'll gain those cubes back. But there is a high penalty for being the farthest on that track, and um, every cube that you lose also is a penalty. All the artwork in the game is really beautiful on the board. I would say the cards are a little average, there's nothing spectacular about them, but the iconography is solid and I think this, that helps the setup of the game because you do have a lot of decks of cards going in different places, but it's all really well labeled on that board. Uh, we have enjoyed our playthroughs of it. It has some nice uh, just some nice tension moments, especially as you get to those recesses each time and you're trying to make that last frantic like you know, I can gain control here. If I take one more turn, it'll cost me the corruption. What do I do? Uh, those tokens that give you extra turns in the game are really helpful and can be really powerful throughout. They're actually worth victory points at the end of the game, though, if you don't use them. So sometimes there's that math that's going on inside your head as well. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun with it. If it sounds like something you would enjoy, check out Senatus on Kickstarter right now. And then be sure to subscribe to Tantrum House because we've got new Kickstarter videos coming your way all day. Yeah, you really do have a lot of choices, although those, um... By using those, uh, what are the tokens those, called? Uh... Able to be able... But the vast opportunity words... <laughs> <laughs> it's three players, not two.